YouTube, what is good? Danny Mulligan here. Today I'm back with another video and today's video is all about how to get stronger and lose weight whilst being natural because that is something that I've managed to do. In the last six months, I've added 60 kilos to my total and I've also lost one stone and I've done that 100% natural as of my lifetime natural. Currently, I have a 210 kilo squat, which is about 462 pounds, a 150 bench press, which is about a 330 bench and a 265 kilo deadlift, which is about a 580 pound deadlift. Six months ago, that was six months less, and I was 88 kilos. I'm going to give you 16 tips of how to successfully bring your body weight down and still get stronger. Some of these tips you might have heard, but the key is in the detail. It's really in the application. So stay tuned for all of them because it's how you use those and apply those where the real juice is. Firstly, Obviously to lose weight, you need to be in a deficit, but you need to not be depleted. Now, what does that mean? If we're in a negative energy balance consecutively for a few days, what happens initially, we empty the jug slightly, enough to lose weight and support fuel. But then when we do that consecutively every single day, every single week, you start to deplete more and more and more like you're prepping for a bodybuilding competition. And if any bodybuilder tells you when they're truly depleted, before they're about to step on stage, they have got no strength. This is why when people are on a diet, they often say, oh, well, I'm on a diet, that's why I'm weaker. No, you've starved yourself of calories consecutively, frequently, or eating too little, and you're totally depleted. That's why you're weaker, because you've got no energy. You've totally emptied the tank of glucose, which is in charge of doing that heavy, hard effort that's required to get stronger. I'm gonna have to say this next one louder for the people at the back. Take diet breaks regular. A bit like my first point, when you're dieting for a long period of time, shit starts to catch up with you. And when it does catch up with you, that's when your training is less optimal. So if you had a week where you just ate a little bit more at maintenance, or even a weekend, when you come back that following Monday, you're gonna be ready for hard, aggressive training. So somewhere I like to put diet breaks is also in my hardest weeks of training because that's when I need the fuel most. So if I, week one, deficit, week two, deficit, but then week three, I'm about to prepare for my heavy, hardest week of training, I'll take maybe a more maintenance approach to my calories, and then I'll go into the deload and bring those calories back down. But during my hardest weeks of training, where it was needed, I have that abundance of fuel for that aggressive training. The next one's simple. Try to sleep eight hours or more. In a deficit, recovery is dampened. So if you can make that via more sleep, it's obviously a no brainer. Eat near your maintenance calories. And I advise a really accurate way to get your calories right in order to achieve what you want to achieve is initially eating at your maintenance or what you think is your maintenance. If you eat at your perceived maintenance, then after two weeks, if your body weight stayed the same, it, it, it was indeed your maintenance. If it's gone up, then you obviously need to eat a little bit less. And if it's gone down, well, it's suiting the goal we need as long as it's supporting training. But if you do it that way, it's a way better educated guess. Add one extra rest day to your hardest weeks of training. This is really important. If you add a rest day to your hardest week of training, that means that week you get an extra 14% recovery. And when you're in a deficit, that's really important. Not only is that recovery gonna give you the more likelihood of hitting heavy weights a few days later, but it's also gonna let those calories, that jug, refill up. Now there's a key detail here. The beautiful thing with the hardest weeks of training, usually, if you're doing it right, are followed by a deload. So that extra day's recovery can be swallowed up by your deload because it can merge into that following week. And then after your deload, you can get your days back on track again. The next one, timing your nutrition correctly. Now when I talked about details, this is one of those things. If this here is where you're planning on training, then what you want to do is have most of your fuel all the way up to your training and the more simple sugars right before your training. That way you've got this huge reservoir of fuel that you've managed to store up ready for the hard aggressive training. Now this exact example is showing actually that you would eat most of your food before you go bed, sleep some of these hours, then have two or three meals before 10 a.m. when you train. But that way, you're able to top up with lots of fuel here, go to bed, and then top up with more fuel 
right when it's needed for the heavy, hard, aggressive training. Remember, if you're wanting to get stronger, it's in the hard training, and a lot of fuel supports hard training. This next tip is just general good programming advice, but it is certainly more applicable here. Don't ride this training program out too long. If you've been doing the same program for 12 weeks, what happens is you're certainly getting that adaptive resistance creep in. Whenever we do anything, we have what's called this learning curve. And at the start, we make a lot of progress, and that progress starts to slow down and slow down and slow down before it's so marginal, that the progress is so marginal that you might as well change what you're doing so you can restart that curve again. Now, in a deficit, recovery is dampened, so the progress is smaller. So when we get to these harder weeks when the progress is so marginal, and you're already making smaller progress, it gets too difficult to try and make progress every week that you're better just changing it before you even get to this difficult stage in the program. This is one that I haven't seen anywhere else, is deload more frequent. So if you deload every five weeks, deload every four. If you deload every four, deload every three. I'm sure there'll be some of you out there that will think, I'm not deloading every three weeks. That seems way too often, I don't need to do that. Well, let me ask you this. If every month, three of the weeks add weight to the bar with one deload where you maintain, and you do that for 12 months straight, do you think you've made enough progress? That whole six months where I was able to manage 60 kilos to my total and lose a stone, I deloaded every fourth week. So I did one week, two week, three week, and then on the fourth week I deloaded. The next, use caffeine wisely. So what does that mean? Well, let, give, let me give you a few personal examples. During my deload weeks, I have no caffeine. On my days that I don't do my hard training, no caffeine. On my rest days, no caffeine. I save the caffeine for my heaviest, heaviest, hardest training. And not only that, I try to have it an hour before my training. Caffeine is very powerful if, keyword there, you've not built up a really big tolerance. If, however, you've got quite a low tolerance to it, use that wisely. Caffeine has been shown to reduce your rate of perceived exertion, basically how hard you think you're working. And in those final weeks of a diet, shit does get tough. You do feel tired. So if you have a supplement that can numb those feelings and allow you to do the heavy hardest stuff that's required to get stronger, for me, you must use it wisely. I think this goes for any diet if you're really interested in optimal, but don't neglect carbs. Your heavy hardest training uses glycogen. It needs that fuel. So do not neglect carbohydrates. I purposely left this one late in the video because if you had heard it at the start, you'd have rolled your eyes and thought, I'm not watching it. But the key again is in the details. Slow and steady. Now, what does that mean? I think a pound a week is too much. I lost less than 250 grams a week, about 0.9 kilos a month over the six months. Now, if you are doing it slow, it should look like this. Now, what's key about these fluctuations and why they're so important is because in these fluctuations, when it's a bit higher, you've got these pockets of energy. So, sometimes, where you're weighing a bit heavier, because Saturday mornings, you do heavy deadlifts, so Friday night, you decided to save all your calories. So, when you woke up Saturday morning, you were a bit heavier. No problem, because you've got all that fuel ready for hard training. So get in the habit of weighing yourself daily, be okay with the scales fluctuating, and especially be okay being heavier on your hardest training days. I would frequently, on my heaviest, hardest training days, eat up the night before so that I was ready for that really aggressive training that's required. This is another one that I've not heard on the internet, but choose variations that you're not very good at. The reason is because when you're on a diet, it's harder to progress, especially at the stuff you're good at. If you're super, super elite at something, it's very, very exceptionally hard to improve that thing in a deficit. You need more of the circumstances in your favor, and one of them is not being in a deficit. Therefore, if you know that your dumbbell bench really sucks, then spend some time working on your dumbbell bench, because you'll take advantage of this learning curve where you're not very good at it, in, these, in this diet phase. The next one, avoid trash volume. Now, to be honest, this is probably just a good advice for training in general. So many people, because they're in a dieting phase, feel this desire that they have to accomplish so much in the gym. Lots of sets, lots of reps, lots of exercise. My advice would actually be trim 
down your sessions, but make sure the work that you do is effective and overloading week to week to week. I don't overlook this one, but rest longer between sets. Look, when you're in a dieting phase, that aggressive hard training, it's hard. But look, if you're used to resting four minutes and you start resting six minutes, it will give you just enough to maybe give that hard, heavy, aggressive effort that's required. And at the end of the day, if you still get all your work done, does it matter if it took you a little bit longer, but you were able to do better than last week? Now, this one is great for tactile programming. Choose low fatiguing exercises as your accessories. So you'll have a list of priority pieces. Maybe it's squat bench dead like me, or it could be another bunch of exercises. But these are things that you really want to get good at. So absolutely prioritize those. But then choose exercises that are less mechanical loading. Instead of heavy pendley rows or bent over rows, why not choose a cable row? Instead of school crushers with an EZ bar or dumbbells, why not choose a cable pushdown? Instead of heavy dumbbell curls, why not choose just a cable straight bar curl? And some of this will actually be a little bit individual. You might find that certain exercises beat you up more than others. So if you can opt for variations, that beat you up less in the joints, then you must. The key here is trying to pull all those dots together. So I'm gonna give you a quick one minute of how I do so. I track my calories and track my body weight every single day. That way I know if I'm in a maintenance, or if indeed I'm losing weight, or if my weight's going up. My training days are allocated every single week. And in my hardest weeks of training, as I say, I push them all a day back. Every day I train in the middle of the day, so I'll always eat big the night before, and the morning of. And then I'll have a coffee and a bowl of granola because it sits okay on my stomach just before my training. Then, then post-training, I have something small like a shake and a banana and then wait till that following evening to start fueling again for my next session. I routinely have three hour sessions, not because they need to be that long, but because I'll do whatever it takes to add weight to the bar. So that often means resting longer. Squat, bench and deadlift are absolutely prioritized. Then everything else, I choose the lowest fatiguing options. I change my program every six weeks. I'm really interested in the monthly average when it comes to my body weight. I'm not really bothered about the daily fluctuations. In fact, I like it when I'm heaviest for my harder training sessions. Deloads, rest days, and my first week of training, I have little to no coffee. And if progress is getting really tough, I'm comfortable taking a diet break for two, three weeks, if needed, to make sure I'm restarting that process again of building the numbers back up. And my fourth week of training is a deload to make sure I'm flushing up that fatigue so each month I'm making progress. So there you have it. If you did find this helpful, please consider subscribing. Check out my socials, my website. I'm pumping out content on social media. Any comments, questions, pop them below and I'll get back to you. If you are interested in coaching, don't be afraid to hit me up. I'll put all the relevant information in the comments. And until next time, see ya.